Hamilton County Board of Commissioners into session. At this time, if I'd ask everyone to rise, please, I'd like to call on Commissioner Jennings to give the invocation and Vice Chairman Ryan Mayberry for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear wise and loving Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for many and abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health we need to fulfill our callings, for sustenance and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work and the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. Thanks as well for the freedom to embrace you or the freedom to reject you. Thank you for loving us even so from your balanced and gracious nature. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Does any commissioner have any report that they'd like to give at this time? There being none, you'll find before you the agenda for tonight's meeting. I would entertain a motion at this time to approve the agenda as is. I make a motion we do adopt the agenda as presented. And I second it. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any questions? There being none, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise, the motion carries. Item number one on the agenda tonight is public comment. At this time, uh, Mr. French, we do not have anyone to sign up to speak. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Thank you very much, sir. So we'll move along to item number two, the 2014-2015 Alexander County proposed budget. This time I'd call on Mr. Rick French, County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in front of you tonight, you have the 2014-2015 budget ordinance for Alexander County. Uh, the 2014-2015 general fund budget is 34 million 454,000 400. I'm sorry, 544,007 dollars. It is a million dollars, a little over a million dollars um, less than the current budget, which is 35 million 543,515 dollars. Thirty-eight million three hundred eighty-nine thousand and forty-one dollars was requested by county departments. Uh, the budget, as you have it, the budget ordinance, as you have it in front of you, contains a six cents tax increase. It contains a num uh, several capital items: bulletproof vests for the sheriff's department, ambulance uh, replacement uh, in EMS, which is one hundred thirty thousand dollars, an item that uh, the state has required us to provide in animal control, which is forty-five hundred dollars. Um, a mezzanine barrier, which is something that goes in detention, uh, and that is placed in contingency. Uh, there is also $22,500 in IT uh, expenses uh, out of uh, $133,000, which, which was requested. There's $50,000 in contingency for an EMS pilot program. There is a two-person purchasing department, that, which is set up starting January 1. Uh, Outside the general fund, there's a 5% water rate increase. There's no other increases, landfill fees, fire district taxes, anything else uh, that you have in your uh, ordinance. There um, are also two supplemental budget supplemental policies that you have. One of those is uh, Economic Development Corporation Board Reorganization, and the other one is a 2000. 2014-2015 budget supplemental policy which concerns full-time, part-time, temporary seasonal uh, and employee positions. Uh, there was also another discussion um, at our last meeting and so the county staff will communicate uh, to the sheriff's department concerning incentives to exceed revenue budgeted for out-of-county inmates housing and that number was $574,875 funds received over this amount would be set aside for vehicles in the for the Sheriff's Department in 2014-2015. In the budget ordinance, um, which this is just a normal budget ordinance that you have, it, it breaks it down, uh, breaks down each fund um, that you have, uh, that which, which we discussed earlier, from the fire departments to the, the different water funds uh, to 911 communications. Uh, there, again, there are no increases in those funds. And I'll be glad to 
try to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman. Does anyone have any questions at this time they'd like to address to Mr. French? Mr. French, does this uh, budget uh, fund the final obligation payment for the CVCC extension? For the EDA grant? No, sir, it does not. But it does do it for the property yes, debt sir. service? it does. Well, 5%, uh, what is the 5% five per, five water increase? Uh, who is uh, going to get that increase? Our water customers that are on our system will get that. The uh, City of Hickory is increasing our water, and we're passing along a little bit additional um, for that. Commissioner Moose. The, the Energy United in East End. In they wouldn't. They wouldn't. That's not on our system. Okay. That was, I just wanted that clarified. <coughs> Uh, anyway. Just one more thing. Uh, bottom line, as compared to last year's salary, uh, how much will we be pulling out of the general fund this year? Uh, one, let's see. Hold on one second. A million fifty two thousand five hundred seventy five dollars. Even with the six yes, percent sir. increase. Yes, sir. What Do debt you. what debt service is going to be paid up paid off this uh, coming year? Uh, the the property the Taylor Toggs property, which would be five hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and that's that's all that we have. We, um, as our last audit indicated, we have a total debt of nineteen million one hundred thirty-three thousand nine hundred sixty-one dollars, which is includes water, schools, and county debt. When is the uh Auditorium going to be paid off? Um, it'll be paid off in 2019. Mm -hmm. What's the annual payment on that? Uh, each year it's $300,000. And that's the school debt you were speaking of? Yeah, that's the, school, the auditorium. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Um, Mr. French, do you do you foresee purchasing the uh, purchasing department being able to save enough money through all the departments to pay for themselves in a year or two? Yes, sir, I do. Any other questions? I'd entertain a motion at this time in regards to the budget. I make a motion to uh, approve the budget as presented. Motion is made by Commissioner Jennings. Is there a second? I'll second it. Commissioner Mayberry seconds the motion. Any other discussion at this time? I just would say uh, I don't think anybody's happy with this uh, particular budget, which is a compromise between all of us. Um, we have the uh, CVCC project. I, I just wanted to go over a couple things. The CVC project, in my opinion, is uh, very much needed. Um, I've had a lot of I've asked a lot of questions over the last month or two. Uh, one of the things that I heard a lot was that CVCC and, and what we're planning to do there is vitally important for the future of this county. Um, I did hear from a few people, um, and I'm not pointing any fingers, but there was, out of the four people that I heard that we did not need it, three of those four were retired. So there seems to be a, a difference uh, depending on if you're still working or if you're not working. Um, 
we heard a lot about, uh, I know we got several comments, uh, you know, don't cut the senior center budget. Uh, someone said, you know, we, we could cut the veteran service position, but, you know, I, th I think all these, you know, we're looking at every position that we have and they are, they're all meaningful to, to some people. Some of them are meaningful, meaningful to all of the people of this county. But, you know, we've got to take into consideration everyone. We, we, we're not trying to make everyone happy, but, um, you know, you can't cut. We've cut this budget, I believe, as far as we can cut it. And we don't need to go any further. I think that's detrimental to the future of this county. Anyone else? Well, this is the way I feel about it. A government which lays taxes on the people, not required by urgent public necessity and sound public policy, is not a protector of liberty, but an instrument of tyranny. It condemns the citizens to servitude. And that's a quote by Calvin Coolidge. And that's the way I feel about it. Anyone else? Uh, one other thing I would add. Uh, we did, uh, I think we need to increase, what we need to do is increase the revenues in this county. And I know that we've proposed some changes to the EDC board and, and long-term development plans uh, over the next year. So uh, hopefully, uh, that will be a good thing in the years to come. That's it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> motion's been made and motion's been second to approve the budget with a six cent tax increase plus the two additional uh, items that were added to there uh, to increase the budget and to uh, uh, the incentive program as, uh, uh, for the uh, inmates at the county jail. All those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion, oh, excuse me. Uh, those opposed, likewise. Thank you, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, the passing of the budget passes four to one. Is there any other business concerning the budget? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I would really like to revisit lowering the commissioner's pay in light of this. Okay, does anybody else have anything? In reference to that, so what do you want to do? At minimum, reduce it a single step. Okay, you're gonna make that in the form of a motion. I'll make that in the form of a motion. I Mr. didn't hear what the. I didn't hear what he, he said, said that he would like to make a motion to decrease commissioner's pay by one increment, which is approximately about 8.5 percent. That motion has been made. Do we have a second? I'll I second. Make, I need to make that into a, a motion. Well, okay. Oh, okay. If you want to make it a sure, formal I'll motion, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I propose that we reduce the commissioner pay one step, which is approximately 8.5% in light of the uh, the current budget. The motion's made. Commissioner Mayberry? I'll second it so we can discuss this. Mr. Mayberry, second. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? 8.5% um, is that going to solve our budget problems? No, it's not going to solve the budget problem. The only way you're going to solve the budget problem is raise taxes 10 cents. We chose to raise taxes 6 cents, tried to save a million dollars in the budget. It's what needed to happen, in my opinion, personally, is that we should have raised taxes 10 cents, which I was not in favor of, but that would have probably done more good than anything else. Cutting the commissioner's pay is, is a good thing, one way or the other. You know, I don't have a problem with it one way or the other. Uh, uh, but, I mean, it's going to be eventually we've got reval coming up. We've got some other things coming up, and we'll just have to keep tight control on the budget for the remainder of the 2014, well, the beginning and the ending and the middle of 2014 and 15 to make sure that we hold spending in check. And I think that's the only thing that's going to, uh, to continue to bring the budget to, to a situation where it needs to be so that we can continue to do the things that, uh, that needs to be done. I, and I understand that. I guess what I'm saying is that there is a, that there's some people who are uh, portraying um, the commissioner's salaries as uh, so egregious that, uh, you know, that that's part of the budget problems. And uh, this, you know, um, it's just not, 
feasible. Well, of course, it's, uh, of course, it's yeah. part of the uh, it's part of the budget problem, but it's not a significant part. It's, it's not a, a symbolic it's part. A, it's a symbolic part. If we want to fix this budget, we need to fix a time machine, go back about four years, and do the tax increase then. Exactly, Mr. French. Um, how much money is it going to save if we uh, lower the commissioner's pay by one pay increment? Uh, approximately eight and a half percent. I know the percentage-wise, but dollar-wise. Uh, dollar-wise, um, you receive thousand dollars a month, eight and a half percent of that. Uh, about eighty-five hundred. About eighty-five dollars. Eighty-five hundred. Eighty-five hundred. I mean. Mm -hmm. Eighty-five dollars a month, Mr. Gaines. Times four, times twelve, times twelve. Eight thousand and five hundred a year. For, I mean, geez, is this for real this time? No, I think. Are we going to bring this back up and, and bump it up next time? No, I think I think Commissioner Ferguson, uh, you know, has a good point. If we're raising taxes, uh, you know, I know we're raising property taxes on ourselves as well, but. Um, you know we're we're in a a, a tight budget and uh, it's a symbolic gesture and I'll be willing to go along with it. Okay, I call for a question. We'll call for the question, and the motion's been made. Discussion's been made. All those in favor of decreasing the commissioner's salary indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the item number three, proclamation to carry Alexander County as a Purple Heart County. Mr. Mike Stubbs. <coughs> Mr. Stubbs is the commander of chapter 634. Uh, here. What I'll do since he's not here is I'm gonna go ahead and read this proclamation. And basically uh, what it is, we've talked to him several times. He was supposed to be here tonight. Of course, he may have been held up in traffic or something may have occurred that prevented him from getting here. I'm gonna read this proclamation at the same time that I read it, uh, fellow commissioners, I'm gonna make this in the form of a motion. Whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration still in present use and was initially created by George Washington in 1782 as the badge of military merit. And whereas the Purple Heart was the first American service board made available to the common soldier and is specifically awarded to any member of the United States Armed Services wounded or killed in combat with a declared enemy of the United States. And whereas the mission of the Military Order of the Purple Heart, chartered by an act of Congress, is to foster an environment of goodwill among the combat wounded veteran members and their families, to promote patriotism, to support relative legislative initiatives, and most importantly, to make sure we never forget the sacrifices made by those so decorated. And whereas Alexander County residents have participated in every war against a declared enemy fought by the United States since the nation's founding, and whereas there have been many former Alexander County residents who made the ultimate sacrifice in giving their lives in the cause of freedom, and there are numerous combat wounded veterans who currently reside within the county, and as Purple Heart Awareness who contribute to the community in countless ways, and whereas Alexander County recognizes the commitment and increasing sacrifices required of military families, and whereas Alexander County pledges its ongoing commitment to and support for the men and women who so, who so honorably served our nation. Now therefore be it resolved that the Alexander County Board of Commissioners hereby declares Alexander County as a Purple Heart County in the state of North Carolina. Adopted this second day of June 2004, and gentlemen, like I said, I'd like to make that in form of a motion. I make a motion we accept this proclamation declaring Alexander County as a Purple Heart County. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise, the motion carries. July's fourth celebration. Mr. Matt Cooksey, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, Kathy, would you like to come up with me? Are you sure? Uh, a committee uh, 
came together in the community and wanted to put on an Independence Day celebration. And it's quickly come together. Back in the winter, we set up fireworks. So on July 5th, we're going to have fireworks out at the high school. And during the day on July 5th, that's a Saturday, July 4th falls on a Friday, um, we will be having a small parade in town, field games, different activities, vendors, those types of things going on in town. It's open and free to everyone except for if you're buying something from a vendor. Can't speak for you that. Um, there will be prizes uh, at the parade for the best decorated, so children need to figure out costumes for their bicycles, and it's pedal power or foot power kind of parade where you're, you walk through town carrying a flag or waving it. So we're very excited about it and just want to make sure that everybody knows about it since it's often a big vacation period that they can put this into it and plan to join with us and have a local celebration this year. And just out of curiosity, I've asked around and the best that I can find out the last time we had a fireworks uh, celebration in Alexander County for Independence Day was 1983. So um, it's been a while, so it's about time. And we hope this will become an annual event. If I'm not mistaken, I think Harry Deal of the Galaxy has played for that event. I couldn't I comment on that. I think that's right. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm sure Harry would remember, actually. <laughs> I guarantee it. Yes. Okay, you know. thank you. But very good. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. And I do apologize to the board. Uh, I, I skipped item number four, reval resolution requiring all real property to be reappraised beginning January the 1st, 2015. Mr. Rick French, County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have a resolution in your packet um, that by statute what it does, it rescinds all previous adopted resolutions that relate to Alexander County's revaluation re schedule. Um, what it does is uh, it sets the cycle at eight years and makes the, it basically said the board desires to establish an eight year revaluation cycle with the next scheduled reappraisal effective date to be January 1, 2023 per General Statute 105-286. The next revaluation would be, uh, of course, be 2015. But, but what this does is it puts that, in, puts that process in motion. And we set money aside each year to take care of this reval cost. We do. It's we're not like it's going to hit us all at one time. We're required by statute to do right. that also. Yes, sir. Do we need to read this resolution? I don't think so. Okay, sir. All right. I'd just like it explained. You're saying that we are going to a eight year reval instead of a four year from here on out. This that, is what this resolution is about. That's correct. Yes, And it can be changed at any time. It certainly uh, can. If yes, ma'am. Other commissioners decide we need to. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because that's what we've done in the past. Yes, ma'am. What that's are correct. the, uh, Mr. French, what are the approximate costs of uh, doing a revaluation? Uh, Commissioner Mayberry, I don't have that those numbers in front of me. I, I think you have an estimate of one year's cost in your uh, your ordinance for the budget. Let me see if I can find that. It costs more than it's worth. It's That's why we're cheap. going to eight years. Four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. Uh, it's more than that. It's more than that. Six hundred. Three hundred fifty thousand set aside. I'd say more like uh, close to a million dollars. Which is not uh, section five, Mr. French. Okay. Revaluation, operation, administration, three hundred forty-five thousand yeah. okay. thirty-seven. That's what I said. It's set aside this year. That's set aside this year. Yes. That's so correct. it's set aside each year for that amount. So when you start looking at it for eight years, that's about what? About is. two point? About two million dollars? For well, it don't set aside the same amount every year. No, it balances out, but it's pretty so. expensive. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it, it, it just makes financial sense to go to an eight-year revaluation, regardless of what property uh, values are doing. You can raise the property tax as you go along. I know people think that, you know, you've got a certain amount of money that has to come into the county. It doesn't matter if it's from revaluation or property tax uh, rate. So... Uh, but in order to save a lot of money, go to an eight year instead of a four year. That's correct, yes, sir. But the state requires a minimum of eight years. Eight years. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, yes, what's the technical? You can 
uh, do a percentage increase every four years. Uh, there's some sort of uh, a percentage rate hike that you can do every four years. You're talking about the set aside? No. You're not aware of this? Okay. No, you have to do it with taxes, raise them or lower them. No, there's, a, there's, there's some other. Uh, we'll talk about it another time. Thank you, Doug. Nope. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, we, got one uh, <laughs> we will uh, aren't those doors supposed to be locked? We will uh, look at that, but at this time I think you did a motion to approve. Is that not correct? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I mean, not the agenda, but the uh, reval uh, resolution. Second. Oh, they need a discussion. Okay. All those in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Uh, item number six board appointments and reappointments. Mr. French, county manager. Mr. Chairman, the. Two reappointments, uh, Western Piedmont Regional Transit Authority Board reappoint myself and Seth Harris as an alternate for three years. That's the only appointments we have for tonight. Okay. All right. So I hear a motion to approve. I make a motion we approve the appointments. I second it. Well, the motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise, the motion carries. Item number seven on the budget, on the uh, uh, agenda, budget ordinance amendments number 36 through 42, Mr. Rick French, county manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, budget amendment number 36 is to increase the Rocky Face Park budget for the receipt of a grant from the Unifor Foundation Endowment of, Co of Catawba County, Catawba Valley Community Foundation. Grant funds will be used to purchase an informational kiosk for the park to increase the tag, uh, tax office budget for the fiscal year 2014 fees withheld by the state to collect motor vehicle taxes under the tax and tag together system and to decrease the interfund transfer budget for fiscal year 2014 portion of the local match for Rocky Face Park phase two due to the grant project being uh, postponed. 37 that you have is the number of um, departments and it's the budget for uh, fiscal year salaries and benefits including the year-end salary accrual for the first payroll in July. Um, 38 is to adjust the county water and sewer fund budget based on the data from year-to-date revenue reports from the city of Hickory. Um, number 39 that you have is to adjust the Bethlehem water fund budget based on the data from year-to-date revenue reports from the city of Hickory. Number 40 is to am amend the uh, fire districts, and that will, uh, and that's basically for the increase that we've uh, had during the years in revenue. It will re result in a increase of forty-eight thousand five hundred dollars um, to those departments. Um, let's see, 41 is to amend the original project budget uh, <coughs> in order to match uh, the project budget by the North Carolina by Diener. This is for the Bethlehem Ellendale Water Capital Project Fund. Um, and number 42 is to amend the budget for updated estimate of the loan fee for the Diener uh, for North Carolina uh, Division of Environmental and Natural Resources for the Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund uh, loan, uh, and for the loan fee to be paid with local funds transferred into the Bethlehem Ellendale Water Capital Project Fund. And that's the amendments that you have tonight before you. And do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve budget ordinance amendments number uh, 36 through 42. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Motion, motion has been made and second. Is there any discussion? Mr. French, on uh, budget ordinance number 37, uh, since this is my first time examining this. Yes, sir. 
Is this normal every year? Yes, sir, it is. Mm -hmm. And this is not built into the budget? That's correct. Is there a reason why that is? We just, normally we're hoping that the, we won't have to go as far into, and some funds are, are covered with turnover and, and such. Okay. These are the adjustments that are actually made each year because of the different revenue reports from each department to cover the uh, cost of, of that area, of that different department. Uh, sometimes they're less, sometimes they're more, but uh, that's, that's basically what is done with those. What? Specifically, two two departments pop up more so than others in the Sheriff's Department and Emergency Medical. One has an increase in salaries and wages of 36850 and the other 53000 Is this part-time or what is what is the nature of this? All the, all the, both. Both? Yes, sir. Is there any other discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise, the motion carries. Uh, other business, Mr. French? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have some items uh, report. Uh, one, I passed out a petition from property owners concerning 587 uh, County Home Road. Uh, it's a concern, a number of concerns, Josh Mich Mitchell, has talked with our attorney and they're looking into this matter. We've also talked with the attorney handling the estate and that's Karen Britsey. So uh, that matter's underway. Um, just a brief report about Rocky Fest, which was held May 24th. We had a number of real positive uh, responses uh, from public. And I just want to note a few of those that we had that were on our Facebook page. Uh, these were from local people and from out of folks that are from out of county. Uh, one, it is great that we have this in our county for our use, plus bringing others. Another comment was, love this place. Hope to spend more time in the future there. Really love seeing so many people using the trails. Another comment, absolutely wonderful park. First visit there and had a, had a blast. The family will be back often to enjoy it more and can't wait till next event. Uh, another comment was, love this race which is referring to the 10k and 5k race in the park many thanks to all the volunteers it was very well organized and had a blast and then we had a nice comment from the hidden night center staff and they were part of the rocky fest uh, experience for folks it says wonderful we are so fortunate to have rocky face recreation rec recreational area and rocky fest um, also um, I want to give you a brief up, update on the Bethlehem Ellendale Water Project. Uh, the the uh, promissory note has, issue has been resolved or is being resolved, and we have su submitted our first pay request of $594,577. This is out of a $2.8 million budget, so the project uh, is about 18% complete, and that project moves along. Um, also, our next meeting will be June 23rd, 2014. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Very good, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, with all due respect to the uh, gentleman who arrived here for the Purple Heart, declaring Alexander Kennedy's Purple Heart, Mr. Stubb, the commander. Yes, sir. If you would, sir, if you come forward, I'll tell you what we've already done so that you will know. Right. What we did, we didn't know what happened, whether he's going to be late or not, and we had a pretty short meeting tonight. It was an interesting meeting, but a short meeting. We've already passed a resolution declaring Alexander County as a Purple Heart County. And with due, all due respect, since you folks have traveled, I'll give you the opportunity to speak, sir. All righty. Uh, we apologize. We were given an incorrect address. We went to 621, uh, the other building. And uh, that's where we found it. I found out where you'd meet when I went to the baseball, softball game. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know where the county commissioners meet? And that's when they told us where you, you meet here. We apologize. That's fine, sir. We were given a, well, like, What I'd like to do at this time, we've got, got a few address. little items we'd like to give to you. So, uh, tells you a lot about us. This tells exactly who we are and uh, what we stand for. And we've got some booklets I'll be giving you. It's a uh, real nice book on the American flag and some information about the military or the Purple Heart. I'm also giving you a pen. In the middle of the pen is the military or the Purple Heart crest. But the, uh, you are more than welcome to wear that being a Purple Heart County. And uh, you may have a 
Purple Heart veterans see that and ask you about it. And uh, there's also a form in there if you have, if you do run into a Purple Heart veteran that gives them some information about us. Have you read the proclamation? Yes, sir. I did read the proclamation, and this committee, uh, well, not the, the, the board, uh, unanimously passed your resolution, and uh, we're very proud of. Thank you, sir. That we're a Purple Heart County. Well, we do apologize. We'd like to be here for the Pledge of Allegiance. I assume you do the Pledge of Allegiance. We did, yes, sir. We did the Pledge of Allegiance. We also do the prayer at this commissioner's yeah. meeting. Yes, sir. Some, some you need to go yeah. to the podium. But if you'll go to the podium there and tell us a little bit about it and everything, we'd greatly appreciate well, it, sir. I, I can still read my presentation if you'd like. I, uh, I think it'll be fine. We'll take time right. for you to do that. And I apologize for you getting the incorrect direction, sir. That's no problem. That's no problem at all. Well, first of all, we're proud to be here tonight representing the military of the Purple Heart. Let me introduce myself. I'm Mike Stubbs, commander of the military of the Purple Heart Wounded Warriors, Chapter 634. I serve the United States Army in Vietnam. At this time, I'd like to ask the MOPH members present for me if they would please come forward. I'd like to introduce these gentlemen. I'll begin with uh, Ron Wade, United States Army Vietnam, Harold McGill, United States Army Vietnam, Steve Zenas, United States Navy Brownwater Vietnam, and a young fellow on the end here is Mike Moore, United States Army Vietnam. The little young fellow here next to him, we always save him the last. He's the one that keeps us out of trouble. That's uh, Mr. Tom Fairbrother, United States Navy World War II. A question, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a, a veteran of the United States Navy during the Vietnam era. Uh, a lot of people don't know what the Brown Water Navy was during the Vietnam War, and I'd like you to explain that to the folks listening on the radio and watching on charter cable, what the Brown Water Navy means. Well, I can, I can say something. He can also back me up if you'd like. That's the ones that were on the river boats, going up and down the rivers. I mean, they're, they're like the rest of us were infantry except for Tom Fairbrother, which was on, he was on a Navy ship, sitting there sat, fat and sassy on a Navy ship in World War II. Had it made, well, the Marines come on board, they'd lost some men. So they said, we need some men. They found out what he did. They said, you're going back on shore with us. So they took him on shore, and that's how he got wounded with the Marines, Tom, in World War II. But brown water, they, are the men, they were the ones on the rivers, on the river boats. And on so, the gunboats. Gunboats, correct. I, I knew what it was. I just yeah. wanted to make sure. Yeah. Everybody else knew what it was. Right. Fast, 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 yeah. fast yes, sir. Good target, so right, exactly. <laughs> Charlie liked to shoot at them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably going to repeat some things you probably already said, but uh, some of it I think is, is worth repeating. We represent all Purple Heart veterans as well as all veterans who have served our country. We're a proud and unique group. We are the second smallest military organization, second only to the Congressional Medal of Honor Society due to our uniqueness of being Purple Heart recipients. To be a member, you have to be a Purple Heart recipient. The military of the Purple Heart is the only organization chartered by Congress for combat wounded veterans. The order to establish the first Purple Heart was issued by George Washington during the Revolutionary War. It was initially created as a badge of military merit in 1782. The Purple Heart and American Decoration is the oldest military decoration in the world in present use. The Purple Heart is specifically a combat decoration. The Purple Heart is awarded in the name of the President to members of the Armed Forces of the United States who have been wounded by an instrument of war in the hands of the enemy and posthumously to the next of kin in the name of those who are killed in action or die of wounds received in action. Today is in the past the single bond that unites members of the order that each has sustained a wound inflicted by an enemy in combat. The members' common bond is that they have given of their own blood for their country. The mission of the military or the Purple Heart is to foster an environment of goodwill and camaraderie among combat wounded veterans, promote patriotism, support necessary legislative initiatives, and most importantly, provide service to all veterans and their families. As a Purple Heart County, Alexander County will be honoring all Purple Heart recipients and all military veterans. All military personnel have a job to do, whether it be a clerk, supply, cook, a truck driver, engineer, or good old infantry. All veterans and current military do what was or is asked of them, they do it well. The pride of veteran feels when they see this being displayed is a great feeling. If you've been, ever been anywhere else other than the USA, 
You know what a great country this is, and the veterans are a big reason we can live the way we do in the greatest country on this earth. We know Alexander County is a very patriotic county. We, the military, or the Purple Heart, consider it an honor that Alexander County is considering bestowing this honor to all veterans. We know there are Purple Heart veterans in this region that are not in our chapter. We know that by this proclamation by Alexander County that other Purple Heart veterans will come forward and be recognized. We, the MOPH, we work with local high schools. We attend their junior ROTC award ceremonies and present MOPH leadership medal to an outstanding cadet. We meet with the students. We talk about military issues and our military experiences. North Carolina recently became a Purple Heart state and um, a few little milestones that we hit, we hit as, our, as our chapter. We made the Charlotte Motor Speedway the first major speedway in the nation to be a Purple Heart Speedway. We also made the Caramont Regional Medical Center, which uh, you would know as Gaston Memorial, which was created at the end of World War II for the World War II veterans coming home to help them heal their wounds. We made them the first major hospital in the nation to be a Purple Heart Hospital. We also hit a, we feel like a major milestone. We made the Carolina Panthers NFL team the first major sports franchise in the nation to be a Purple Heart team. A few things that a lot of people don't know about North Carolina. North Carolina has the third largest military population in the nation and is the only state that has a military base for each branch of service, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, and Coast Guard. At this time, I'd like to ask if there is any other veterans, they'd please stand. Thank you for your service. You can learn more about the military or the Purple Heart at www.purpleheart.org and our local chapter at www.moph634.org. And what, what we're doing is we're making every county in North Carolina Purple Heart County. We're going to be the first state in the nation for the whole state to be purple with every county. That is our goal. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I have uh, a question. Are there any individuals standing in front of me or including yourself that have been awarded more than one Purple Heart? Mammy, were you awarded? Two. Two for you. One was enough. One was enough. <laughs> There's, there's some of us, one. a couple of us uh, also, you know, wounded more than once, like shrapnel or something of that sort. But, and a lot, of, a lot of infantry, when you're in the field, infantry, if you're not seriously wounded, you got a little scratch or something like that, you don't, you don't go, you don't ask for a Purple Heart. No. You got a fellow laying there, you know, you got people laying there, you know, dead or somebody with a guts hanging out. And you don't say it, well, I ain't about to go. Like our, three of us here were with the 1st Infantry Division. The 1st Infantry Division, to get a Purple Heart, you had to go back to the rear for it to be, be examined by a doctor and be signed off by a doctor. But you, you didn't ask for a Purple Heart. That, like I said, something you didn't seek. When you, you, you're just there to take care of your buddies and, and try to keep them alive. That's, that was our goal. Uh, I would just comment just for your information and folks, we've, I know I've said this before, but we, uh, we have a veteran service officer in this county that's a retired Lieutenant Colonel in the Air National Guard who was a nurse in the Air National Guard and she's our veteran service officer. In addition to that, uh, I'm proud to be a member and the commissioners were uh, nice enough to, and nice is not the correct word, but it's the word I've come up with right now to create what we call a veterans committee in the county with represent, representation from all the veterans organizations in the county, VFW, DAV, and the American Legion, and uh, so we meet monthly, and we produce the Memorial Day service, which we did actually the Sunday before Memorial Day, and we also produce a uh, American, excuse me, a Veterans Day ceremony coming up in the fall. So we have a very active and synergistic veterans organization via the Veterans Committee. Uh, now, I don't know how your organization, where are y'all headquartered? Where are you headquartered? Well, we call ourselves now that we started in 92 in Charlotte, basically Queen City chapter. Well, we didn't, we didn't like that name. The, a couple of us here were charter members, and we decided that we wanted to change the name. We went with Wounded Warriors. That was long before they started the Wounded Warrior Project, so they stole their name from us. That's what we tell everybody. But uh, we're, we're, we consider ourselves Southern Piedmont, kind of Charlotte being the central location of it, because we have like eight counties that we totally represent. I'm but we'll come to any county. That lives close to Charlotte. I live right. in Mecklenburg County. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm out of Harrisburg. Uh, Tom's out of Concord. Yes. Shelby. Gaston. Another the Gaston yes. County. We we're mm -hmm. we're a very uh, widespread area that we now, cover our chapter. If I may ask one more question. Yes, sir. Are any of you also rem uh, members of either the DAV or VFW American yes. Legion? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's fantastic. Right. Have a very strong VFW chapter. Uh, it took me a long time to join it, but uh, 2423, if you've ever heard of that one in Indian Trail, very strong chapter. And uh, any other questions? I'm just have to say I'm very proud of all of you for putting your life on the line well, for our freedom. Thank you. Only thing I'll tell you is uh, we did read the resolution. We passed the resolution, and uh, I'm proud that you made the trip from. Mecklenburg County, not just Charlotte, yeah. and made the trip up here, and and uh, uh, proud to see that I would uh, uh, not be a, a veteran myself, and not taken away from the our veterans committee, but I'm sure that after the meeting, if you'd get with Commissioner Jennings, that they would probably love for you to come up and speak sometime at their at their veterans meeting, and to discuss to so say you sort of know what they were doing, and how possible they could possibly get the chapter started here in this county. You've also got two chapters that's actually closer than we are. You have a chapter in Winston-Salem, 638. You also have a chapter in Statesville, Troutman area, 285, mm -hmm. which uh, they can also come up. Right. I think it'd be great information for the two of you to get together, or the six of you, and uh, uh, seven of you now. Put right. Berkey in there. But uh, to sit down and discuss for a few minutes after the meeting, if you're not trying to put things on you, but I think it'd be well, very I think interesting. I'd love to. I'd love to. I think right. it'd be very good. Well, well, Mr. It, Chairman, excuse me, if I can make one more comment. Yes, sir. It's just kind of a side comment, but I think it's important. Uh, I know our newspaper uh, was represented at the Memorial Day service, the Table of Times, which is published uh, every Wednesday. Um, and each of us on the Veterans Committee had various duties, and I had been to Master of Ceremonies the last two years, but this year I was, my duty was to hold the uh, Coast Guard flag. And beside me, uh, standing with the Navy flag, was a veteran of Iwo Jima. And um, uh, yes, you were there also? Uh, bless you. Uh, more than that, God bless you. Um, and what was ironic about him being there, we also, he also played taps. And to hear, I couldn't see who was playing taps in the background. But he <laughs> played the taps like a 20-year-old. Right. And uh, so you can identify with him. And I've, uh, one thing that the Veterans Committee is doing without going on and on and on, and it was an idea of Ginger Annis, <clears throat> we, the Veterans Committee, <coughs> and with the help of Chad, who is back in the uh, control booth, is we have recorded as many veteran stories going all the way back to World War two veterans, Vietnam veterans, Korean War veterans, um, Desert Storm. and Desert Storm and, and all the, the so that we put them, put them down visually with interviews so that future generations when folks like myself go to hopefully our, to our greater reward, younger kids can see these interviews. And it's uh, something we've done, we put them in the libraries in the county, in the schools, and you can also buy them. So I'd love to talk to you after this meeting if you right. have a few minutes. Well, we tell a lot of people about Tom. We tell him he actually crossed with George Washington across the Potomac since he was Navy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of so, cold that day, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, very good. Yeah, very good. What we'd like to, if you don't mind, we'd like to get all the commissioners up with us and County manager, we'd like to do a picture. We send this picture to our national headquarters. Mm -hmm. We have a magazine it appears in. We'll we also back. have a little little something we'd like to give to the county. Pictures will be on our site also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like this is time. I'd like to have a proclamation. Yeah. Oh.
Okay. Some of us need to turn sideways. <laughs> well, this uh, will be. Yeah. One like this sentence that we'd like to give this to you. I'd like to read it. If you don't mind. The Military of the Purple Heart Special Recognition Award bestowed with pride to Alexander County, North Carolina, for your dedication and support honoring America's combat wounded veterans becoming the Purple Heart County. Presented by the Patriot Members of Chapter 634, Military of the Purple Heart, USA. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Well, that's beautiful. Okay, that is really nice. That's, that's, a, that's a really nice spot. Thank you, sir. Questions and all. Right. Get in touch with me. Thank you, sir. Mr. Genies, Commissioner Genies, Commissioner Moose. Okay. Which one is it? Yes, sir. What is it? Which one is it? Thank you. Legal update and property matter. Okay. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Thank we, uh, you. Thank you, gentlemen. <coughs> gentlemen, the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion at this time to approve the consent agenda. I so move. Motion is made. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen uh, of the board, I'd like to. We need to have a closed session tonight. And it'll be under North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11, paragraph A, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, to prevent disclosure of confidential information as it regards to contractual and, what was the other one? Property matters. Property matters. And that's what we'll be uh, discussing. And we will re-adjourn for the purpose of adjournment only. That's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion is made. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. Motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs>